Welcome to Mem Analysis for Hedgehogs. I don't know about you, but it's pretty hot here in Germany. FireEye has published a paper on the topic dusfuscation, and that's actually um, a collection of obfuscation techniques for cmd.exe commands. That's a quite interesting collection. Some of these obfuscation techniques haven't been in the wild before, and uh, so they are new, but uh, some of them are um, based on previous wild samples, um, and wow, there's quite some ugly possibilities to use obfuscation. Let's take a look at one wild sample right here. The goal today is to deobfuscate this uh, to the point where we get the actual payload of the sample. The, this batch command was in a macro malware and I skipped the step of extracting the macro and so on. That's uh, not the interesting part right here. Okay, so that's our batch script. Um, yes, it is one. And uh, let's choose the appropriate language for that. And um, we only need Notepad++ and Python to uh, do the task for today. First thing, um, or the thing that we can easily tackle is uh, the caret symbol. The caret symbol can just be um, removed. If you look into the paper, I think it was one of the first things described. Carrots, right? So it will explain to you that um, that's an escape character and most commonly used obfuscation character. So just in this case, we can just um, use a replace search and replace function of Notepad plus plus, and we will replace all occurrences, um, remove the tick mark from the selection. So we replace the carrots with nothing, and then we get this. It's still not quite that readable, right? There is another character we can remove most of the time. Uh, those are the um, commas and semicolon. So we can do that as well in the same manner. But we don't want to remove it from everything. Uh, here's a part, well, there's a, that's a string that's uh, set to a variable, that's the name of the variable. We don't want to mess with this up, so let's remove the stuff just from this part and the part before. We, yeah, replace, replace, and same with this character. Okay, so that's a little bit better, but still not the way we want it. And um, what is that? The, the pluses, they are superfluous um, because it's a, these are integers and you add a plus, okay. It's the same integer. Um, we can use now um, regular expressions to tackle this task. So what we could do is use something like regxr.com. That's quite interesting for testing your regular expressions because you can enter your text here, you can enter your expression here, and it will explain what you did there, actually. Like, here it says, okay, that's the capture group, and it's also colored, so you find it. And uh, so you match this character Z from A to Z, and so on. So you know what you're actually doing here, and can quite easily um, write regular expressions. So let's copy and paste this in there. And uh, I want to remove any plus that is uh, followed after a digit. So, firstly, the plus is a special character, so we have to do use the escape for the plus. Now we have our plus uh, values. And then the um, digit is slash d. So, and we may have like numbers like that. Actually, yeah, I think that's better. And um, we want to remove the plus and we want to retain the digit itself, so we put the capture group on the digit. I think that's quite okay. So now we have the marks are correct. So we copy this. And if you have, um, if you put the tick on regular expression, you can actually replace and find based on regular expression. So that's uh, the capture group. Um, you can access the catcher group with slash one, 
That's the first capture group. If you have several of these, you will have slash two, slash three, and so on. So we replace this expression with this expression. So that way we remove the um, plus. Let's test it on a small set like this. Say replace and selection this. Oh, wait. Now we want to use this. Right, replace. And it works, so we can remove that and place it everywhere. Okay, that's a little bit better. And um, then there's another thing. There are like superfluous um, spaces. We can remove them too, though we have to take care not to remove them from variable names like these. But we have variable names here. Uh, so use a reg regular expression for that as well, mainly. Okay. Um, if we have two spaces, we might want to um, replace them with one space instead, but not if they are preceded by something like um, these, because those are variable names, and not this, because there's also a variable name like this. We don't want this, and we don't want space before that, okay. And now, oh, let's add a plus. So it marks all those spaces that are not part of these variables here. I think that should work. That should work. Um, it doesn't work in general, just in this case, I guess. Um, okay, so if we do that, what do we want to replace it with? Well, with, we just want to capture, that's a good question actually. The part we want to retain is this. So one of the spaces is retained and the rest of the spaces can go. So we use that. Yes, so we replace that with that. We will delete, so we will delete the space after that and any other spaces that come after that while one is uh, here being retained. Okay, so let's do that and replace them all. Okay, now it already looks a bit more neat. Um, again, that's kind of interesting. Let's mark this so you see where this variable is. Here's one variable, here's another. Okay, mark. Um, what is being done here is we have the variable, and this is set to this alphabet right here. It's uh, an alphabet. Okay, let's mark it. And then we have a for loop, which will um, assign these integers to this x. So first iteration, it's x is 58, second iteration, x is 1, and so on, until the 66. But then there's like this exception, if it equals 66, abort. So, but there's no other 66 in there, um, so it will abort um, right when the last value is there. Um, this variable will access the alphabet with an index x. So um, basically it will get, let's say, x first iteration is 58. So it will get the 58, um, at the 58th position, the character in this alphabet and then assign it and add it to this variable. So by uh, this way, it will build up the command and the command is then um, executed here. So it will use these indices for um, building up um, this alphabet for the encoding of the payload. Um, we can now simply use Python to uh, translate this. Python command line interpreter is quite useful for that. 
And I will say, okay, alphabet, right? It's a string, so we put this in a string. And as you can see here, the alphabet is 66 characters long. So if you have an index 66, it will be out of bounds because you access the um, array from 0 to 65. So that last value is at index 65, 66 was thrown arrow. So we don't need the last value and um, I don't really paste this alphabet right here. And then we have our indices and they are first this string, but we don't want a string. Actually, we want um, the values in there. So we split the string. If you don't add any um, parameter, any argument to split, it was split in white space. So now we get this. And it's an array of strings, but we want indices, so we want uh, to have integers instead of that. So let's just make this a bit better and convert it to integers. So for every index, we will set the integer value that and now it looks better so we can now say for every index in indices oh wait set the variable the result the payload yeah the payload that's the variable we save the payload in i will initialize it with an empty string and for every index in indices we access the alphabet at index and we add this to the payload payload yeah, out of range, right? Because that's because of the last value in there. Um, but still, it did um, write the payload until that point. We could um, now write it to a text file. Maybe, maybe we should do that. Mm. Well, let's just payload txt right and we will write our payload in there so if we exit this it will also close the reference no bad payload txt and there's the payload okay here's our payload we set the language to let's say powershell so we see what's going on and all it does it will iterate through these um, URLs and then execute them, download the file there and execute the file that was downloaded. So that's a payload for a downloader which has several sites to access. Um, yeah, that's already it, I guess. I did a short script that does the deobfuscation for this particular batch file um, so it may not work on others, it's just uh, if, in case you want to use it and modify it for similar cases. So I'll put a link in the description below. Thanks for watching and uh, see you.